All right, so in this video, we're going to be reacting to this blockchain seminar from Gilbert Verdian, where he talks about the future of Quant, uh, the interoperability issue that it solves through the Overledger platform and everything Quant. So if you're not holding Quant, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. And without further ado, let's get into it. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, actually. It's, it is evening. Uh, so my name is Gilbert. Um, I am wanting to talk to you about Overledger. So we've created a solution that fixes a problem that we all have. And if you look at what the problem is, we've had this issue before with the internet. So Overledger, we've created a blockchain operating system that lives on blockchain. And it's yeah, so like he said, Overledger is the blockchain operating system for the future. It is a blockchain operating system and the biggest benefits of the Overledger, he's going to be getting into it soon, so make sure to stick around. Not a blockchain. So if I just introduce us, uh, so my background has been about 20 years in cybersecurity, working in banking, financial services and government. Paolo, he heads up the Center for Blockchain Studies at UCL. So he's very prominent. A lot of people know him in, in the space. And Colin, he's a cybersecurity guy as well, working in AI and cybersecurity. So we came together between the three of us, there's about 80 years of experience. So we consider us as one of the best blockchain enterprise teams that, that has come together in the world. So if I tell you a story, uh, so my introduction to blo blockchain and Bitcoin was in 2009. Did anyone buy any Bitcoin in 2009? Because I didn't. No, so it was 0. 0.0005 cents. Yeah, that was a crazy time, 2009, when uh, blockchain overall and Bitcoin, the first um, blockchain technology, uh, was at its beginnings. And obviously, Gilbert, nor no one, I am assuming, watching this video did buy Quant or Bitcoin back then. So, yeah, if you missed out on Bitcoin, make sure to stick around to see whether Quant has the same... Um, the same kind of potential that Bitcoin had and fulfilled back then, so yeah. So I was working at the Treasury, the UK's Treasury, which handles the economic aspects of the economy as the CTO. So I spoke at a conference like this, which was just government, and I said, we need to look at Bitcoin. Has anyone heard about it here? No one knew anything, 2009. So then I got the policy guys in, in my department to do a paper on it. And the assessment came out that Bitcoin will never have any material impact to the UK's economy. And we're going to leave it like that. And that was 2009. So fast forward to 2014, I was working in healthcare in the Department of Health. I had an issue where health records were all over the place and I couldn't connect them together. So what I thought of was, you know what, blockchain can solve this. It's, it's a good use case to solve it. So I ended up solving it for healthcare for the department. But at the same time, uh, the ISO people said, can we turn this into a standard? This is a really good idea. So I ended up founding TC307, which is the ISO standard for blockchain. So now we have 46 countries working together to solve blockchain. And that includes privacy, security, reference architecture, terminology, interoperability, governance, use cases, smart contracts. So 46 countries are all working together to solve blockchains. And the next meeting is in London in, in a couple of weeks in May. Yeah, so um, obviously, like he said, um, he's from a very experienced background, Gilbert Verdian, and not just him, but the entire uh, team, the entire Overledger team, like he said, um, this is one of the most experienced teams in the blockchain um, space, as well as in the uh, solving interoperability space. So this is why we believe that um, the Overledger will be the main um, solver of the interoperability, interoperability issue in the future. So, um, yeah. Um, they have one of the, the most stacked teams I've ever seen from startups like that. And this was actually back uh, five years ago. So a lot of what he said, he actually did. So that is also another reason why you should believe in his message. And as you guys know, on the channel, on the Crypto Nation channel, we truly believe in Gilbert's message. So yeah, uh, let's see what else he has to say in this uh, seminar. So I wanted to talk to you about networks. And if you look at this diagram, it, it was this was done in 1964. 
So an organization called RAND, they said, this is what networks look like. This is how they actually work. So telecom networks are what we used to have. A central body, you connect into it, you make phone calls. Then we had decentralization when the internet happened. And that was around 89, early 90s. And that's when the internet created a connection of other networks. And we have the internet. And then 2003-ish, we had peer-to-peer. BitTorrent, Napster, we connected to each other to do transfers and that created the Starfish network. And then something happened. So 2008, the Satoshi paper came out. It was late 2008, 2009. And that changed quite a lot of things. And one of the biggest changes is it created the mechanism of distributed ledgers. And distributed ledgers are where the internet is going. We're all on that journey in 2018 we are on the journey to create a new internet and it's the internet of trust and it's happening already. Yeah, so as you guys can see, this was like I said, five years ago and this is what he had to say back then about the internet of trust and it's crazy how far that whole idea has come and how many people have actually subscribed to it. So this is one more reason why Gilbert Verdian is a visionary. Like I've been saying that on this channel for a while that Gilbert Verdian is a visionary and yeah, it's... I kind of wanted to react to this video so I can show you guys why I keep saying it, why Gilbert Verdian is a visionary in my opinion. And yeah, hopefully this answers your question. So what is the internet of trust? And if you think about it, the original internet was a closed network. It was a few nodes, universities, governments, military connecting to each other. If something funny happened, you can actually ring up the person on the other node and says, what are you doing? because your computer is doing something really weird or your network is doing something really weird. But then the internet grew, more people started using it, and we didn't know the people using it. It grew to a, a mass scale, and then the internet became untrusted. So we can't trust anyone on the internet because we just don't know them. So to do that, we've actually created a cybersecurity industry, which is where I come from. We've protected each other from each other because we've built firewalls, we've put defenses in, we've had daily leakage prevention, we have antivirus, we had everything. And that's to protect us from us. And if you think about what society is, we're actually a very untrusting species. We grew up in our tribe, we knew the people around us. If someone new came, we, we didn't trust them. Who is that person? Why are they why they're walking this way? So society doesn't allow us to trust each other because that's the nature of humans. Yeah, so that's a very interesting point from Gilbert. Um, obviously, us as humans and in our society, we aren't very trusting. And that has trickled down into places like the internet as well as the financial system as well. We don't really just generally trust the banks. So this is what they are trying to solve with the whole CBDC movement and more specifically with what Gilbert Verdian is doing here with the Overledger platform, with um, how he is actually in a way cooperating with major banks so they can become more trustworthy so um yeah that's why more and more people will continue to trust the um, financial system of the future and that is largely due to due, due to um gilbert verdian's um gilbert verdian's work in a way so to trust each other we've had to build governments institutions banks services systems in order to do that trust and to gain that trust and to understand I can trust that other person. And that's what blockchain does. If you break down everything, forget all the crypto, forget all the technology. If you break down what blockchain does, it allows person A to trust person B because the protocol told him it's okay. And that's really fundamental because society can change. We can trust each other again without having to know each other. And that's what the real core essence of blockchain is. So with this technology, for the first time, we can actually honor the original vision of the internet to be a trusted network for machines and people to trust each other. So we can trust the network without the need to know and trust each other. Quite powerful. But we have a problem. Blockchains are flawed. We have a problem because blockchains are closed proprietary networks. And if you look at what's happening, Ethereum is being built in isolation. Hyperledger is being built in isolation. Ripple, they're all closed proprietary networks. So whatever you do, you're only on that one blockchain. Yeah, so listen closely to what Gilbert is about to say, as this is 
one of the major issues in the blockchain technology. Obviously, if you're using Ethereum, you can only use the Ethereum network. You can't interconnect all of your blockchains that you have on your account, on your account. So on your, on your wallet, sorry. And yeah, that's one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem, because there isn't really other many other issues. Every everyone loves crypto that is in the crypto space, but that is one of the re one of the places where crypto is kind of flawed. So listen closely to how Gilbert is going to solve this issue. It's very difficult to do something on Ethereum and do and be recognized on Ripple and vice versa. So there's a problem because users can't connect and interact with other people on other networks. You're restricted to that network and, and its technology. So if you're on Ethereum, you're restricted to the technology constructs and the limits of Ethereum. You can't do anything differently. And you can't really benefit from the technology of other blockchains. And finally, you're, 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 you're actually locked in to fees. If the price of mining goes up, you can't change it because you're stuck in the network. And this was the same problem that the internet had. If you're over 30, and if you're over 40, this was the internet. If you remember, you connected with your modem, with the sound, to your provider. It was CompuServe, Prodigy, America Online. They served you their vision of the internet. This is how you did messages. This is how you did emails. And the funny thing is, if you're on CompuServe and you wanted to send an email to someone outside, they charged you. It was like 5p. Did you remember that? I mean, that's you think about it, it's impossible to think about. It. Yeah, so I like the constant comparisons between um, the blockchain technology and the internet technology because there's both groundbreaking revolutionary technologies, but the internet, and, and they both actually had the same problems, but the internet is a, um, about 20 or 30 years um, older than the blockchain technology. So the way the internet's problems were solved in the same life stage in a way that the blockchain blockchain's problems are going to be solved is the way that we can make that connection and that connection is the way gilbert is thinking which no one else is actually thinking that way so this is why gilbert verdian is a visionary once again so the internet used to be closed proprietary networks exactly the same problem as blockchain networks closed proprietary and then something happens the internet opened up, all these networks connected. So openness and connectedness create innovation. And that's that's what happened. The, the internet flourished and magic happened. So the internet of today is a result of that connecting of closed networks. And that happened not that long ago. I mean, early 2000s was really when it really took off, late 90s, 2000s. And that's what we seen, and that was the cause to create the Googles and the Amazons and the Facebooks and all the internet companies because of this thing, because they connected and it was open. So the question I ask is why should you be limited to one blockchain? Why should you be stuck and limited to one single technology when there's different benefits and different blockchains that you can benefit from? So what we're saying is why not benefit from all blockchains? And so what we've done with Overledger, it's an operating system that sits on top of existing first generation blockchains, second generation blockchains, nth generation blockchains, and interoperability blockchains. And it allows you to connect seamlessly without giving you any extra overhead, without giving you any extra consensus or cost, because it's, it's facilitating that data transfer between networks. We're connecting and bridging networks and allowing you to do something quite unique to create new multi-chain applications, not yeah, so um, as you guys can see, this is what the Overledger does if you've been listening to Gilbert. Um, and this picture is very, very important. So take a screenshot if you're watching this, if you don't understand fully what the Overledger does. And yeah, this is kind of self-explanatory, but as you guys can see, it is a operating system that sits on top of all uh, different types of blockchains, like um, the first, second, first generation, second generation interoperability blockchains yeah so everything like bitcoin ethereum um neo uh, waves ev anything that you can think of um even rs or arc and yeah all the blockchains are being managed in a way by the overledger operating system distributed applications multi-chain applications so if you think about it a bit more 
We're kind of like what Microsoft did. If Microsoft in the 90s made Windows to be internet-based and put Windows OS on top of the internet to create internet apps, that's what we're doing today. So we've got our operating system on top of existing blockchains and future blockchains to create internet-based multi-chain apps where you can actually benefit from the different types of blockchain. Yeah, and this is the similarities between um, how the internet or with how Microsoft managed um, their apps and how Overledger is ma managing their apps as well. So yeah, take a, take a screenshot of this picture as well if you, if you like and if you want to understand fully what the Overledger does more. So the challenge is with the DAP, it's DAP1 sits on blockchain A and it does everything on blockchain A. DAP2 sits on blockchain 2 and does everything on blockchain 2. So you can't allow these applications to transfer data and transfer value very easily. It's a problem and that's what we're solving. So with multi-chain apps, you can actually split your app up and you can say, well, I want my app to use a bit of Ripple for authentication. I wanted to use a bit of Bitcoin for let's just say storage of data. And I wanted to use Hyperledger because of scalability for resilience. You can actually have that choice with multi-chain applications. You have the flexibility. And as an enterprise working at HSBC, my career, you have resilience. So if I want to have multiple data sets, multiple applications across different chains, I've got resilience and, and we give you that choice. So the benefit is you can live on and run on multiple chains. You're never limited to a single technology. So if I have a problem with one blockchain, just because of a security issue or a scalability issue, right now you're limited, you're stuck. But with having multi-chain applications, you can migrate. You're never limited to IBM. You're never limited to Ethereum. You can manage the cost because if the fees go up, then running an application might have cost you a million pounds a year. And if the fees go up, it's going to cost you a hundred million as an example, and you can't afford that. And finally, what we're doing is creating something called treaty contracts with Hamburg University. This is the multi-chain version of smart contracts. So you can execute a smart contract on one chain and move it on to another and recognize it vice versa. So again, a unique innovation. Yeah, so like you said, there are many, many benefits uh, to this technology, to the overledger technology, how it solves the interoperability issue and yeah, how it makes the whole um, blockchain blockchain operations more smooth it makes them smoothly it makes them run easier it makes them easier for all users so yeah the, those are the biggest benefits of the overledger so how are we going to do this well firstly we're doing that interoperability which i've mentioned without an additional blockchain we're creating an ecosystem so people can build apps it's all open source it's all out there going to be on github as, as I mentioned previously then we're looking to connect the internet directly to all the blockchains because you can't do that today either. How can you send a TCP IP connection from the internet to blockchain? It can't be done. So we want to bridge those two mega networks. Um, and finally, what we're looking to do is to create blockchain IPs, which we're calling quant IP, to be able to do that internet connection to create that internet of trust. And that's the next generation internet. And we will create applications like a browser or email or messaging which are decentralized, but hyper-decentralized. Um, and this is where you come in. We, we are doing this all open source. It's, uh, it's going to be out there. We're creating a map store, which is coming online Q2 in 20, Q1, sorry, Q1 2019. Uh, this is for you to create multi-chain applications. Our customers are really, we're focusing on enterprise to solve enterprise problems, but also developers to allow them to do this. So this is created by the community, for the community, it's open source, and we're allowing you to use quant tokens to access the network. And, and a quant token is pretty much the same as an iPhone. You have an iPhone, it has some keys on there. It's an access key that you use to access the app ecosystem for Apple. And we're doing the same with, with the quant token. Yeah, so like you said, that's where the quant token comes in and that's where its price has the most potential out of any um, altcoin that i've seen so far so yeah quant is an incredible project so yeah that was pretty much the video um for today um she goes on to say a couple of other things about quant and also another thing that i also really like um about gilbert is that he's so transparent as you guys can 
as you guys heard everything is on github so you can check out how everything runs how everything operates and you can even um try to understand it from an, on a deeper level um just because gilbert decided to put it on github so yeah that's amazing um regarding the quant price let me know how you think it will go how much will it um, rise short term or fall and how much will it fluctuate on the long term do you truly believe in this project like we like we do or are you just um go looking to um invest in something else for a change and yeah let me know your thoughts on quant and the overall ledger platform um uh, in your in the comments below overall let me know your thoughts and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one